Good morning. It is a joy to be in worship together. I want to welcome all the folks that are worshiping with us online as well. Um, we are aware of the raising number of COVID cases in our area, and so we are just encouraging folks to wear their masks, to do what they can to protect not only themselves but one another, and so we just want to offer that up um, today to just uh, do what you can to, to protect yourselves. I uh, want to lift up a few announcements this morning. Uh, Nourish One Child food delivery will arrive on Tuesday, September the 2nd at 10 a.m. They're in need of folks to help unload. Nurse One Child is also searching for weekly volunteers to take boxes to recycling. So if you're interested in that, you can contact us at the church office. Handbells are starting back this Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Um, we are continuing our summer study of the Christian denominations this Wednesday at 6 o'clock in Ensminger Hall or on Zoom. And this week we're going to be looking at the African American Methodist denomination. And we are going to require masks for that event out of respect for our guests. Um, they will be wearing masks and have asked if we could do that as well. And so we're going to do that in respect and honor of our guest speakers on Wednesday. Uh, you're invited to support the Camp Lookout Benefit Golf Tournament, either by participating, playing on a team, or you can sponsor the tournament as well. That's going to take place Saturday, September the 25th at 8 o'clock at the Bear Trace at Harrison Bay. And you can find out more information about that at CampLookout.com. There's going to be a youth parent meeting at noon in the gathering um, this afternoon. So I'd love for you to come and, and hear more about that if you have a youth or young adult in your, in your family. Um, this morning we're thankful for our flowers, which were given in memory of Mary Broyles by her sister Alma in honor of her birthday, which was August the 15th. And so... Certainly love seeing our flowers here this morning. At this time, uh, let us now listen to this morning's prelude as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day. There is one more announcement I want to lift up this morning. Um, today is the fifth Sunday offering for Holston Home for Children. So if you would like to donate uh, for Holston Home, you can indicate that on your check, or you can also give directly to them at holstonhome.org. At this time, I invite us all to stand for our call to worship, which is a reading that is printed in your bulletin. Let's stand and let's read this aloud with one another this morning. Let us pray. O wisdom on high, by you the meek are guided in judgment, and light rises up in darkness for the godly. Grant us in all doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us do, 
that we may be saved from all false choices, and that in your light we may see light, and in your strength path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 577. Let us sing together. Now affirm our faith with the canticle of wisdom number 112 in your hymnal. This is a responsive reading. I will read the light print and invite you to respond with the bold print. May God grant that I speak with judgment and have thoughts worthy of what I have received. For God is the God even of wisdom and the corrector of the wise. Wisdom is more mobile than any motion because of her purity Wisdom pervades and penetrates all things. She is the forever and the power of God, and the pure emanation the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing can be filed, and it's in wisdom. For she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God, an image of God's goodness. The wisdom is but one. In every generation, wisdom passes its holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. Truly, God loves nothing so much as those who live with wisdom. For she is more beautiful than the sun and excels every constellation of the stars. Compared with light, she is found to be superior. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite Reagan Kelly, our Director of Children and Family Ministries, to come forward.
she wants to kind of stick around and, and uh, get to know some of the families and children, especially here at the church. And so it is a joy, a thrill to uh, to officially commission Reagan uh, into uh, our ministry, into our staff here at Keith Church. Um, it's a joy. I, I know the uh, interview team working with the staff and parish committee just is very impressed with Reagan's uh, wisdom, sort of beyond her years. Work at Camp Lookout 
Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lisa. Colin Smith in the hospital in Texas. Yes. So the family of a Reverend Mark Caldwell passed away with COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Are some of us carrying concerns that are unspoken this morning? We acknowledge with the lifting of our hands. and uh, Certainly, if there are some needs that you would like for us to know about or to include on our church's prayer list or to lift up at our Wednesday afternoon uh, prayer group, there's an opportunity on the uh, response card to let us know how we can join with you in prayer. Um, if you're worshiping with us online and would like to let us know about some concerns that you have or some joys uh, that are on your heart, you can let us know at prayer at keithumc.org uh, by email. And we're always honored to uh, lift up in prayer the concerns that you have on your hearts and your minds. Um, let us go now to the Lord in this time of prayer. God of all time and all existence, you're the God of all seasons and all circumstances, of all wisdom and all compassion. We come to you in our time of prayer this morning with weary and heavy hearts. We watch events unfold in our world from far away, and we can feel so helpless and so hopeless sometimes. We pray for the people in Afghanistan those who are trying to leave, those who have no other choice but to stay, all of those who have lost loved ones in these past several days, and especially for the families of our 13 servicemen and women who lost their lives trying to safeguard the lives of others. We pray for those who are in the path of Hurricane Ida set to hit landfall this afternoon, on this anniversary of another awful hurricane 16 years ago. We pray for those who are anxious and who are afraid or alone this day. We pray for the, all of those who are infected with or affected by the COVID surge in our community and in our nation and throughout our world. We pray for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who have died those who may be dying, and all those who love and who care for them, especially our health care workers who are feeling so much of the strain of this. Lord, for all of the burdens that we are bearing on our hearts and in our lives, for all of the storms that blow into our lives in so many ways, oh God, give us your wisdom to not lose our way. And give us your compassion that we might look out for one another along the way. For we also give you our thanks this day for the gifts of life, the gift of your love for us in Jesus Christ, for the generosity of so many that makes a difference in the lives of others. We thank you for the ministry of the Holston Home for Children and the difference that they have made in the life of Brian who has found ways to address his anger and make better decisions and find hope. Thank you for the generosity that has impacted a woman that we may never meet in Hancock County. Thank you that a bunch of Methodists got together and decided that we can make a difference, that we can provide a well that can provide Phoebe clean, fresh water for her and for her family. And so for these glimpses that we get of goodness and grace and generosity in our lives and in our world, 
we give you thanks. We pray that in the midst of all of the challenges that we may face individually and throughout the world, that you would continue to help us find ways to link our hearts and our lives together in love and in service to others in Jesus' name. As we pray together, the prayer that he gave us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to take uh, the faith we sing, the hymnal supplement that's there in the pews, and let us turn to number 2215, and let us join together in singing the Cares Chorus. We're going to sing this through two times. Let us stand and sing. you to remain standing for the reading of our scripture this morning, which comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, this is the ninth chapter. I'll be reading the first 12 verses, and I'll be reading from a version of the Common English Bible. So this may sound a little different, so listen out for what you may hear in God's Word today. So I considered all of this carefully, examining all of it. Righteous and the wise and their deeds are in God's hands, along with both love and hate. People don't know anything that's ahead of them. Everything is the same for everyone. The same fate awaits the righteous and the wicked, the good and the bad, the pure and the impure, those who sacrifice and those who don't sacrifice. The good person is like the wrongdoer. The same holds for those who make solemn pledges and those who are afraid to swear. This is the sad thing about all that happens under the sun. The same fate awaits everyone. Moreover, the human heart is full of evil. People's minds are full of madness while they are alive, and afterward they die. Whoever is among the living can be certain about this. A living dog is definitely better off than a dead lion, because the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing at all. There's no more reward for them. Even the memory of them is lost. Their love and their hate, as well as their zeal, are already long gone. They will never again have a stake in all that happens under the sun. Go, eat your food joyfully, and drink your wine happily, because God has already accepted what you do. Let your garments always be white. Don't run short of oil for your head. Enjoy life with your dearly loved spouse all the days of your pointless life that God gives you under the sun, all the days of your pointless life, because that's your part to play in this life and in your hard work under the sun. Whatever you're capable of doing, do with all your might, because there's no work, thought, knowledge, or wisdom in the grave, 
which is where you're headed. I also observed under the sun that the race doesn't always go to the swift, nor the battle to the mighty, nor food to the wise, nor wealth to the intelligent, nor favor to the knowledgeable, because accidents can happen to anyone. People most definitely don't know when their time will come, like fish tragically caught in a net or like birds trapped in a snare, so are human beings caught in a time of tragedy that suddenly falls to them. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Are we, are we bold to say thanks be to God? Amen. You may be seated. is one of the five books or scrolls in the Hebrew Scriptures that are paired with different festivals, celebrations, commemorations. And we've already looked at a few of these. We looked at uh, the Song of Songs, which is paired with the festival of Passover. Uh, we looked at um, Ruth, uh, which is paired with the festival of Pentecost or the agricultural season of the Festival of Weeks. Uh, last week... Um, I got, out of, I got out of town for Lamentations. I let Sarah Prince and, and Andrew handle that, um, the book of Lamentations, which commemorates uh, the fall, the destruction of the temple. Next week, we're going to look at the book of Esther, and it's pairing with the festival of Purim. But this week is Ecclesiastes, which in the Jewish history and heritage is paired with uh, the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. Uh, this is a time where over a, a week-long period, uh, the people of Israel, the Jewish folks, would, would live in tents uh, as a way of remembering how the Israelites, when they were leaving Egypt and slavery in Egypt, they would live in tents or tabernacles or temporary dwellings in the wilderness as they made their way to the promised land. And so it's kind of reminded, uh, so, so that's sort of a reminder that, that Ecclesiastes talks about, uh, you might have picked that up, about the transience of life, the temporariness, the transitory quality of life. Um, this is something I can imagine as I'm thinking about the Feast of Booths, Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, recently, our youth, Mark led our youth down to uh, Chattanooga, where they visited a place called Tent City. And this is where the homeless live, along some train tracks down there. Uh, and so they live in, in these tents, these, these very temporary, uh, vulnerable types of shelters. Um, and so the youth went down and, and helped to feed and to serve them. And these folks down there, they live in that way, most of them involuntarily. Um, Whereas the people of Israel would celebrate this festival voluntarily. Most of them were living in relatively comfortable, stable lives. So pitching a tent would remind them of what their ancestors, the Israelites, experienced in the wilderness. And so they, we have this book of Ecclesiastes, which again, um, that's one of the main themes of Ecclesiastes, is, is life, it, it starts off with, uh, in, in this version, pointless. All is completely pointless. You may have known of it as vanity, vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Some translations have futility. Everything's futile. Um, the word, the Hebrew word is hebel, which is, is kind of like a puff of air, uh, just a, a breath. You know, and so it says all is vanity. Everything is chasing after the wind. That's what life is like as the book of Ecclesiastes says. And that can sometimes, I don't know about you, that can sometimes be a downer, right? I don't know if you, if you as I was reading that, you're like, really? Where's, this isn't very uplifting um, here. And, and Ecclesiastes can be a little bit that way. Ecclesiastes is in that section of the Bible that we call wisdom literature. It's in there with Proverbs and the book of Job and some of, these, some of the Psalms constitute wisdom literature. And generally... Wisdom literature is fairly positive. It's fairly optimistic. It says there, life has a meaning. Life has a purpose. And, and life is somewhat predictable. You know, the good are rewarded. The bad are punished. It, kind of things make sense. And so wisdom literature generally sort of says, go along with the flow of life. That, that's how you live a good life. 
That's how you live a meaningful life. That's the conventional wisdom. But Ecclesiastes is, is skeptical of the conventional wisdom. It challenges some of this conventional wisdom. Where conventional wisdom says life has meaning and purpose, Ecclesiastes says it's all pointless. It's all futile. It's all meaningless. Whereas uh, conventional wisdom says the good are rewarded, the bad are punished, Ecclesiastes says not so fast, not always. The race doesn't always go to the swift. The battle doesn't always go to the strong. Wealth doesn't always go to the smart and favor doesn't always go to the skilled. Time and chance, it says, affect everyone. So we have this, we have this strange book, um, and it starts out, and, and the speaker here is, is something that we, at the very beginning, uh, identifies themselves as the teacher or the preacher. Uh, in Hebrew, it's koheleth, so sometimes you may hear that. Uh, but it's the teacher or preacher of wisdom. Uh, makes these observations, and early on in the book says, sets out to investigate every realm of life. Starts out to look at work, and then pleasure, and then wealth, and power, and even wisdom itself, and ultimately concludes it's all pointless. It's, it's all chasing after the wind. We think work, our work lasts, endures? No, it doesn't endure. It, we're just going to get up and do the same thing again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next year. The, this harvest festival that we're celebrating, you know, for the Feast of Tabernacles, the fall harvest, that's great and all, but we're just going to have to plant seeds and harvest and do it all again next year. It's all chasing after the wind. Work, pleasure, pleasure's fleeting and frustrating when you either can't figure out what you want or can't get it. That's chasing after the wind. Uh, power, power, we don't think, we don't have as much power as we think we have. And it can be taken away from us just like that. Wealth, he says, wealth is great, but when we die, it's going to go to somebody. We can't take it with us. He says, and even wisdom, even wisdom. He says, yes, it's better to live a wise life than the life of a fool. But they all end up in the same place. And that's what picks up in our scripture for today. This, this, this idea that the same fate befalls everyone. The good and the bad, the righteous and the wicked, the pure and the impure, those who sacrifice, those who don't sacrifice, those who swear solemn oaths, oaths and those who are afraid to swear a solemn oath. And we can kind of continue and fill in all the gaps. Those who do this, those who do that. Same fate befalls everyone. It says the virtuous life is no vaccine against suffering or death. The time and chance happens to everyone. It says no one knows the time uh, that will come upon us. It says accidents happen to everyone. We are like birds caught in a cage or fish in a trap. None of us know when tragedies might befall us. And we've seen that, haven't we, just this past week? A couple weeks, the floods that came through central Tennessee. Uh, this storm that's coming into Louisiana again, Ida. All of these things happen to all of us. And, you know, Ecclesiastes can sound kind of dark and dreary. It can sound kind of gloom and doom, uh, but really Ecclesiastes is naming something that I think a lot of us are often reluctant to admit about life, something that we resist about life, and that actually may resonate, though, with our culture out and around us that is actually skeptical of the conventional wisdom that life always makes sense. You know, skeptical of our easy optimism and our lofty idealism. Ecclesiastes sort of punctures those who, kind of like me, sometimes wear rose-colored glasses. Ecclesiastes is unflinchingly honest and brutally realistic about how things really are in this life. We all do come to the same fate. And sometimes the battle isn't won by the strongest. 
nor the race won by the swiftest. This is honest about that. But it's not all despairing. It's not all bleakness. It's not all, uh, all dark. Uh, there can be uh, in Ecclesiastes also an affirmation of life and, and, a, and a call to celebrate the life that we've been given even in the face of the transitoriness and transience and temporariness of it all. Uh, now, some of that is tempered somewhat. He does say, one of my favorite lines in the scripture is, um, a, a, a living dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, but it, it actually does resound a little bit more affirmatively than that. Throughout this book, you hear refrains, kind of like, you know, the eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. That's not an exact quote from Ecclesiastes, but it does kind of capture the spirit, particularly in the passage that we read today. It said, go eat your food joyfully. Drink your wine happily because that's, God wants us to do that. That's what, how, God wants us to enjoy the gift of life that we've been given. He said, let your garments always be white. Um, even after Labor Day, we can wear the festal color of white. That was sort of the, the, the color of, of celebration and joy. Uh, always keep some oil on hand to refresh yourself, it says. And enjoy your life with your dearly loved spouse, or we could include just all of the people that we love in our lives, all the days, it goes, of your pointless life that God gives you under the sun. So do the work that, that you can do. Do the work that you're good at. That's the part that we can play. That's the role we can play in the world around us. Whatever we're capable of doing, do that with all, everything we've got. In other words, there's kind of some twin themes going on here in Ecclesiastes. On the one hand, it's saying, you know, life is, you know, is temporary, it's, it's transitory. But the other theme is, but seize the day. Make the most of your life. Carpe diem. That was a, a phrase that I learned when I was in high school and the movie Dead Poets Society came out. I was about the same age as the kids in that move, portrayed in that movie, you know, an all boys school where um, uh, Robin Williams is the, is the teacher there and, and sort of teaches his students. Uh, and he, I remember at one scene, he brings them up in front of the, the picture of their predecessors from long ago at the school, all with their faces all full of hope and optimism. And he whispers in their ears behind them, Seize the day, boys. Because those people in those photos, he says, are now pushing up daisies. Make the most of your life. Seize the day. And I like what one of the, uh, the, the, the woman whose Bible study sort of inspired this sermon series, Candy Queen Sutherland. She says, Ecclesiastes can scare us with its pessimism, but it can also spark us to seize the day. And Ecclesiastes has both of these going on. I don't know if you got the sense as I was reading the scripture that this is an odd book. You know, it, 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 I kind of wonder, how did this book ever get included in the scriptures? Um, and the, apparently, the Jewish uh, community, when they were deciding what to include in the scriptural canon, they also struggled with, do we include this? But maybe it's sort of a voice from the margins that, that sort of gives us this unconventional wisdom. And then they paired it with this festival, this fall festival that celebrated uh, the people living in these booths and tents and tabernacles during this wilderness experience as a way of remembering that even in the midst of that, God was with them, leading them along the way by a pillar of cloud and, and, and fire. God was with them in the wilderness. God is with them in the celebration. And as we Christians believe, God is most fully with us in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the first chapter of the Gospel of John said, uh, the, the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, but literally is tabernacled upon us, among us, pitched his tent among us. 
It's a fascinating idea. And then when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus who lived His life well aware of the transient nature of that, of that Him being uh, the righteous and the just coming to the end of a cross like He did, even in the face of that, lived life that He would have feasts with all... Think of how many times Jesus is shown in the Gospels as eating with folks. He ate. He drank with His friends. He, he was merry. He enjoyed His companionship in this life. We see maybe the strange, unconventional wisdom of Ecclesiastes expressed and maybe extended and enlarged in the life of Jesus, who basically said the point of it all is essentially where Ecclesiastes ends. The very end of Ecclesiastes, the, the writer, the teacher, the preacher says this, at the end of it all, this is what we're to do. Worship God and obey His commandments. And God, the judge of all, will take care of the rest. That's some good wisdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn this morning is a is a hymn of. Uh, prayer, pleading for God to be our vision, uh, to be our wisdom as we walk through this journey of life together. And so I invite you to turn in our hymnals to number 451, and let us rise and stand and sing, Be Thou My Vision. forth from this uh, service of worship just a reminder of the offering baskets that are available at the uh, entrances on your way out and also uh, just a reminder of the Holson Home for Children we're uh, receiving uh, donations for that we can also make those donations online uh, through our website or app uh, as well if you'd like to support that ministry along with the ministries of our church and so as we go let us go with maybe the wisdom of Ecclesiastes on our hearts to seize the day, but also not to take ourselves or our lives too seriously, that we can be persons of joy and of generosity in our communities. In the name of Jesus Christ, we go in his grace and in his peace. <laughs>